Jesus taught this parable to those who were convinced that they were morally upright and to those who trusted in their own virtue, yet looked down on others with disgust. So this is what we see culture doing when it comes to the LGBTQIA plus community, looking down on them with disgust. Oh, I can't believe they would do that. I can't believe they live like that. God wouldn't like that. That's not godly. So let's see what Jesus had to say about people who just look, look, at, look down on people with disgust. Two men who went into the temple to pray, one was a, a proud religious leader, the other was a despised tax collector. What's up geeks it's your guy q here aka jgtv and we are back with another one guys and today we are in god over culture part two of god over culture and the lgbtqia plus community we are talking about what does god have to say about sin versus what we have to say about it because we want to take one sin and we want to exalt it and lift it up over everything else and that's not what god does he's brought everything to an even playing field Let's get right into it. In my last video, we talked about Jesus being a friend of sinners. We saw in the text in Matthew and Luke how Jesus got called out numerous amounts of times by Pharisees and other people asking why does he hang out with sinners and people who do not follow God's law. Today, I want us to really take a look at if we are walking in God's will, like I mentioned in my last video, would God want us to be heterosexual straight and be evil absolutely not that would be completely not productive because that's not what jesus is aiming for right that wasn't what jesus was aiming for when he came right god wants us to show love to one another and we have to be able to show love to whomever we encounter because that's what we see jesus doing in the text now we'll see plenty of people say well, I'm not God, I'm not Jesus. No, we're not, but we should be striving to be Christ-like. And what Christ was not like was he did not come up to people and say, oh, because you have this particular sin, you know there's no hope for you, right? We don't see this in the text. We don't see Jesus saying anything like that to anyone. So we have to be careful as people who follow Christ with telling people in the LGBTQIA plus community there is no hope for them. You can't claim to love Jesus if you're still in a homosexual relationship of, of any sort or you still love the same sex. Listen, we all struggle with something just because you can see that particular sin if you can see it or if it's noticeable to you because you're paying attention to it or you're looking for it or you're paying attention to a couple that is that. Your job is not to go up to this couple or these people and make them feel like, there is absolutely no help, no hope for them. That's not our jobs as Christian. And we are spreading the gospel. That's not even what the gospel says, right? The good news is that we have Jesus Christ. So I want you guys to take a look at the story in the book of Luke. That's where we're going to be at today. We're parking in Luke. I'm going to be reading in chapter 18, and I'm going to go from verses 9 to 14. 
Two people are in this story. One of them is extremely self-righteous and he feels like because of the way that he is, he lives what he does, that he's better than this other person. So let's check this story out. This is Jesus talking here, by the way. So Jesus is starting this story and he's going to end it. Jesus taught this parable to those who were convinced that they were morally upright and to those who trusted in their own virtue, yet looked down on others with disgust. So this is what we see culture doing when it comes to the LGBTQIA plus community, looking down on them with disgust. Oh, I can't believe they would do that. I can't believe they live like that. God wouldn't like that. That's not godly. So let's see what Jesus had to say about people who just look, look, at, look down on people with disgust. Two men who went into the temple to pray. One was a, a proud religious leader. The other was a despised tax collector. A plethora of things could go here. The other was a despised black person. The other one was a despised homosexual. The other one was a despised person with a disability. Nonetheless, the other was a despised tax collector. The religious leader stood apart from the others and prayed. How I thank you, O God, that I'm not wicked like everyone else. They're cheaters, swindlers, and crooks like that tax collector over there. God, you know that I never cheat or commit adultery. I fast from food twice a week and I give you a tenth of all I earn. Now here comes the tax collector. The tax collector stood alone in a corner, away from the holy place, and covered his face in his hands, feeling that he was unworthy to even look up to God. Beating his breast, he sobbed, and brokenness, and with brokenness and tears, saying, God, please, in your mercy, and because of the blood sacrifice, forgive me, for I am nothing but the most miserable of all sinners, right? For I am nothing but a miserable gay person, right nonetheless the man said but the most miserable of sinners which one of them left for home that day reconciled to god jesus is asking his disciples this question he says the humble tax collector not the religious leader for everyone who praises himself will one day be publicly humiliated and everyone who humbles himself will one day be publicly honored and lifted up it's funny because Jesus had a problem with this dude. And I love the way that because of the way he was acting, Jesus paired looking down on others with disgust with self-righteousness. Like he paired these two together because he specifically says, I told this parable because there were people who were looking down on others with disgust. And then we see the proud religious leader or the proud straight person, right? Whatever you want to put there in the temple, right? And look at the way that they're praying. Oh, God, you know I would never sleep with another gay person, right? Now, no, this is not in the text, but this is the example I'm using. I'm not adding to the word of God because I read the word of God. But this is what could be here when you are dealing with someone in the LGBTQIA plus community. God, I'm straight. I've always liked men. I've always liked women. I would never do that. Like that gay person over there that's in church acting like they belong here. Really? Jesus had something to say about this righteous man that was acting like that. Jesus said, who do you think went home reconciled to God? Because it wasn't the proud person that fasted from food twice a week and gave a tenth of all that he earned. And we will say that things like this is important. So there's no way a gay person can get to heaven because they're being gay. So there's no way they're doing those other things, right? You're wrong. You're wrong. Again, you're wrong. And if you call yourself a Christian, you're really wrong. You can't lead conversations or say things like this to people in any community, whether they're disabled, whether they're LGBTQIA+, whether they're black and you don't like it because you're, you struggle with racism. You can't do this stuff if you call yourself a follower of Christ. Like, you can't be stuck in any type of mindset based on what you've been taught in your family or anywhere and let it trump what Jesus Christ says. Jesus had a problem with this righteous dude. And in the video, the second video that's coming tomorrow, we're going to go a little bit deeper. What exactly are we saying here when we're talking to someone in the LGBTQIA plus community who will in fact tell you, I do love Jesus. I grew up in a Christian household. I love Jesus. Like I've always struggled with this. 
I, I, this is who I am, but I do love Jesus Christ. So now, because you're offended, you're telling that person, no, you're lying. You're not really saved. You live a lifestyle of this. And it's, I don't think you have that authority, friend. I don't think you sit in that place of judgment, friend, or Christian. So I will be back tomorrow, and we will finish up the God Over Culture series. We'll wrap up the finale, and then we will jump right into our next series. So stay tuned, guys. I'm super excited. What I always say, guys, hey, and don't forget to share this video, especially with someone in the LGBTQI plus community who has questions. Because we know that when we're going around telling people they don't have no hope, it's not right. And it's not true. It's not true. People who don't know anything about God are telling people that God hates them, and they're wrong. So share this video, guys, with anyone who has questions. What I always say, guys, take care of yourselves, love yourselves, love one another, but most of all, love God. Peace.